So the only time in the past that I have started thinking about it in reality have been, okay, I'm sure you guys have had these before. <clears throat> when you're like in the store when you were little and you like lose your mom. <laughs> or if your brother or sister was late from picking you up from like a basketball <laughs> or practice or something. Or maybe you call home and you knew your dad was supposed to be there and he called like six times and he didn't pick up and it starts to be like, oh my gosh, did the rapture happen? Am I left behind? And they can take it like, ah. <laughs> You know, did I miss it? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of you had that feeling before. <laughs> or the, the other thing is, I mean, if you didn't experience that, I bet a lot of you saw these billboards here. I have a picture. Last spring, when Judgment Day was, was predicted to be May 21st, 2011, um, some people say it actually was. Uh, I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there are some people who are really serious about this. They paid money to make billboards and advertisements to, to let people know. I mean, it says the Bible guarantees it, so it must be true. <laughs> so then, of course, like a few days later, you see this billboard. <laughs> yes, those billboards actually were out there. I saw one driving probably from one wedding to another in the spring. We definitely saw that billboard. People pay money for that, too. <laughs> Christ 
and being in the sons of light that Paul calls the Thessalonians. You might ask, how do you, how do, you do this? How does this happen? Are you spending time in God's Word, in the Bible? By reading God's Word, we can build faith and hope in the things that He has for us. We can be comforted and know that we don't need to worry. Are you spending time in community with other believers at a church or in a Bible study? This is where God demonstrates what it means to love other people and what it means to be loved by God. This is where we can be comforted about our fears and encouraged by one another in our faith. Some of the ways that we can be alert and ready are to be watching and reading the signs of the times. Pursuing sanctification, which is just a big word for holiness or being set apart and being different. By walking closely with God and living for eternity rather than worldly and just temporary things. We should be storing up treasures in heaven by investing in people and by sharing the gospel with others and by using the gifts that God has given us wisely and for his glory. Paul writes these things to motivate us to be faithful servants and good stewards of the resources that we've been given. There will be eternal rewards for these things. Ultimately, we can have so much hope for Christ's return. In the passage from chapter 4 that I read earlier, it said that the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with a voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Whoa, that's, that's not a fairy tale. Like, that's reality. Paul wrote these things to encourage them. He says that a few times in here. He says he has heard about their faith, and he's pushing them to continue. You guys, we can be a movement that is different. We can be a movement that's causing change. We can be a movement that's building each other up. We can be a movement that's living, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we can be a movement that is greatly expected of Christ's return. What would it be like to honestly live your life in the hope that Christ will reign on this earth soon? That God will make all things new and good? That we will be able to be in the presence of His glory? This is real. It's not just a story, or a goofy book series, or a billboard prophecy, or a paranoid fear. It's real and it's for us. Let's live in light of that. Let's dive into the Word and let's be a part of a community that encourages one another. And share with others that excitement that we have. So this is Paul's answer to these concerns, to let them know that those who live or have died in Christ will rise with him at his return. They will not be left to experience the wrath that is coming for those who do not believe. Paul wrote these things to calm their fears. But then he gave them these next verses that I'm going to read to instruct them on what to do. So he uses these last few verses to give the Thessalonians some practical thoughts. <clears throat> Starting in verse 12, he says, Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything, hold on to the good, and avoid every kind of evil. These are practical things that we can be doing in preparing for Christ's return. This is what we need to be aware of and to apply to our own lives. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to do it. This last part is a prayer that the Thessalonians will be marked by holiness at the second coming of Christ. Paul prays, May God himself, the God of peace, is sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This one, or the one who calls you, is faithful, and he will do it. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. 
We don't need to feel the pressure of all of these things. This, this is a lot. This, it's a lot of things to do. We can feel like this long list of things that we have to do. We don't need to feel the pressure of these things. But we can be encouraged. If we have, if we have put our faith in Jesus, if we have accepted the gift of grace that came from Christ's death on the cross to cover all of our sins, it is God who will make us blameless at the coming of Christ. We have nothing to worry about. Simply that we are trusting in Jesus. Paul is encouraging us here. We don't have to worry, but we should be expecting. We should be looking forward to the day Christ returns. And until then, we should act in these ways. But only by God's power, and not by our own. Let me pray.